Hi guys, James at Goddard Radio Moscow Beer and Metal Reviews again for you today. For this one we're going to do something a wee bit different. My last few videos have all been Victorian and other Australian beers, but for this one we're going to make my second visit to Norway. I've already reviewed a beer from No New U for you before, but for this one we're going to go to probably the set, probably one of the, the other well-known export breweries from Norway. So this is Hand Brigeriet, and I'll apologise now if any of my Norwegian pronunciations are wrong in this video, so apologies for that in advance, but we're going to have a taste of this Norwegian wood beer, which is apparently a traditional Norwegian farmhouse ale. It's a smoke beer with juniper berries, apparently. So we'll get into that in a minute. I just want to give a shout out to Chris at Slow Beer in Richmond in Melbourne in this video as well. He helped me pick out a nice few Italian beers and stuff like that in his shop. A lot of people I've spoken to in Australia rate this as one of the best beer shops in Melbourne. So if you do find yourself in this area, go and check it out. But as is usual for my beer reviews then, I'll take you through a little bit of a brief history of the brewery. It is very, very short. If you don't want to stick with me for that, just fast forward a few minutes into the video and you will get right to the tasting. The brewery website's in the video description for you below, along with a link to my other reviews that I'll do from Hans Brigerier in the future. And I'll also put the link down there for a slow beer as well. So as I mentioned to you before, the brewery is from the town of Drammen, which is to the southwest of Oslo, the capital of Norway. You're talking about 40 or 50 kilometres away. But the town is located in the Buskerud County, and the city has a population of 63,000. So by Norwegian standards, it's quite a big city. But this city started off as three separate seaport towns, which were eventually merged together to form Drammen in 1811. And they had big celebrations just about three years ago to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the city. But the the unique location of the town actually made it a big centre for timber and shipbuilding and if you look at the map of Norway you'll see the Drammens Fjord which is I think one of the, I've heard that's one of the longest fjords in Norway I'm not sure about that but go and check it out and you will see and Norway is supposed to be a very very picturesque country and hopefully I can actually go and visit it one day but to tell you about the brewery itself the brewery was founded in 2005 by Jens Maldel, Rune Eriksson Arne Eide and Egil Hilde. Apologies again if the name pronunciations are wrong, but the original premises was an old textile factory which was built in 1874, but this was located in a housing estate not far from the As Brewery, which is a big landmark in the town of Drammen, but now they have a property in an old train rail yard which they say suits them a lot better and it looks as if it's quite a modern facility that they've got there. But the original brew kit was brought from England and it has a 9,000 litre capacity per batch and in 2006 their production capacity was 40,000 litres per year but by 2012 they'd actually expanded this to 350,000 litres and this was done using a new 1,800 litre brew apparatus. And their beers are actually quite widely available domestically in Norway but they're also exported quite widely as well, particularly to America. And I've seen these beers at home in Scotland and of course obviously you can get them down here in Australia as well. But the company also import a number of different beers to Norway as part of their distribution business. So they are, these guys are quite a growing brewery. The, the big, these ones along with uh, Nunu are probably the ones you're most likely to find from Norway. And hopefully there are some more things that come out of Norway in the next wee while because everything that we seem to get from Norway seems to be very, very good. So fingers crossed for a few more things. But anyway, you can also have a look at their website as well. I'll point that out to you. Go and have a look at their website and have a look at the different beers they do. They've got, I think there's about 25 or 30 different beers that these guys are producing there. So as I say, the brewery website's in the video description below. Check it out and you'll see all the different beers that these guys do. So anyway, to move on to the actual tasting part of this beer, um, I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. It's quite nice. As you can see, You've got the tip. This is the kind of typical signature that you'll see on Hand Brigeriet's uh, labels there, and it's also on the bottle cap as well. The kind of handprint there. I've got the light reflecting off that because it's nice and light outside, and you can see this kind of Norwegian sort of. I think that's maybe oak wood. It looks like oak or mahogany or bark. It might even just be tree bark there actually. But it's nicely presented on the side. It tells you a little bit about, as I was saying, what this beer is all about. It says, once every farm in Norway was required by law to brew its own ale, all of that ale had a natural smoky taste and most of it was spiced with juniper. With Norwegian wood, we have recreated this traditional style. And it has it, I think. It says, Handbrigeriet makes living beer, not pasteurised nor filtered, but re-fermented in the bottle to create natural carbonation which is it's really quite cool that actually and it says you should serve this guy at about 8 to 10 degrees and I think it's maybe slightly just below that but it should be okay and it has been out of the fridge 
for a little while now. So we'll get it open and get on with the tasting here then. So it's 6.5% on the Richter scale and it is, as I said, it's a smoked beer that is brewed with juniper berries. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with it. Good bit of smoke off that guy in the opening. Just need to watch that the carbonation doesn't go too crazy on this one. That's one thing you can t you sometimes find with these beers is that you can just get a huge amount of head on them as you pour. But we can take you can smell the smoke off this guy already, so I'll just let it chill for a little bit, and then you can see the colour of it. I'll just bring the camera up and let you have a wee look at this again. So as you can see, it's a really dark, rich kind of golden amber colour, this one. There's a lot of carbonation in that, just because of that natural carbonation process that they've put in the beer. And you've got a nice kind of big, foamy, beigey coloured head on this one. It's really nice looking beer, actually. But a huge, huge head on this one. I need to let it calm down a little bit. I'll try and get a wee bit more out so we can taste it. really smell the smoke off this guy. So, in terms of the aroma, as I said, there's a huge amount of smokiness to it. You can pick up a lot of the woody flavours as well, just in the aroma, but it definitely has a kind of big spicy element to the nose as well, which is quite interesting. But it's mainly a kind of woody smoke. It's not quite like a, a Rauch beer in that sense, where it's got a big meaty character. There is a little bit of it. But it's more of a kind of spicy and, and bready, yeasty smoke that comes out of this guy. But you've got a good bit of these kind of spicy cereal grain aromas too. There's a caramel element coming out too, but again it's very subtle. The big notes, as I say, that you're getting out of this one is definitely that kind of big, typical sort of bready spice that you would expect from it being a farmhouse ale. A lot of yeasty, spicy character, and then there's that kind of smoky character that is is typical of the Rauch beers, as I say. But more, it's it's a nice blend. If if you want to go into technical terms, it's a nice kind of blend between the uh, the Rauch beer aroma and also a farmhouse ale. So it should be quite an interesting one for us to try. But there, we've managed to get it out the bottle now, so we can actually give this guy a proper taste. So this is. The Norwegian wood from Handbrigeriet in Drammen in Norway. So, cheers. It's a very interesting flavour that, just on first taste. There is actually a good little bit of chocolate coming out in this one. It's really interesting this. At the front of the mouth, you're getting this really kind of grainy sort of spicy attack and that kind of goes around the edges of the tongue as well you can pick up just a little hint of the juniper berry coming out but it's very faint it's mainly a kind of charred smoky flavor that's coming out on this even the the kind of yeasty flavors that are quite uh, prominent in the aroma are quite subdued in the flavor i think it's mainly a smoky one this Yeah, at the start, you're kind of getting a lot of the sweet caramel. The sweet caramel comes in and that's backed up by this really kind of almost ashy, smoky flavour. But it's, it's really nicely done. It, it's, it's a very interesting one because obviously it's, the Rauf beer is a big, meaty flavoured one. But where the meat is normally in a Rauf beer, this is where you're starting to get the kind of thicker, bready element to the beer, the kind of farmhouse and um, kind of saison yeast flavours. So you've got a nice kind of sweet dark caramel flavour that just kind of blankets the front of the tongue there. Around the edges you're getting this really ashy and kind of woody smoky flavour but there's a big yeasty presence starts to come out later in the beer too. You can feel that just at the back of the palate. There's a lot of kind of spicy and woody flavours as well and as I say there's this sweet chocolate element that mixes in with that caramel flavour and there is 
you can pick up just a little bit of the berry fruit. The berry fruit doesn't come out really in its own right, if you like. It sort of mixes in a little bit with that kind of sweeter element from the chocolate and the caramel. So it's got that nice kind of interesting complex balance to it. So if you do try this beer, just try and take in a little bit of all the flavours of it. It's, this is one of the most interesting ones I've reviewed for you on here, actually. Yeah, it almost, in terms of the mouthfeel, it almost gets this really oily little bit at the front and that's where you're getting the really sweet chocolate and the nice sweeter element of the caramel coming out and that's where the berries are kind of mixing into this one and just around the edges you've got this kind of dry character from the smokiness and the woody flavours come out in there as well. You've got It's this smoked wood, it's not quite vanilla in the same way that some of the... Uh, this the kind of smokier stouts and the Rauch beers can be, but it's a nice ashy smoke with that kind of beech wood flavour. I can feel the beer warming just a little bit as I'm kind of holding it here for you. Not very much, but you can feel that the body of this beer is going to get thicker and thicker as you let it warm up. You can see why they say an 8 to 10 degree um, serving temperature for this one because it will kind of thicken up and that's when you'll get more of the sort of yeasty uh, farmhouse kind of side of the beer coming out. But I mean in terms of the flavour this one is really really interesting. A nice yeasty character at the back of the mouth, the sweet fruits coming out, caramel and chocolate and then round the edges of the tongue is where you're getting a little bit of this kind of smoky character right on the edges at the back of the tongue. It's a really really interesting beer this one so I'd recommend if you do try this just take a bit of time and get used to it. But in terms of the mouthfeel of it it's mid body definitely, as I say, it gets a bit thicker as you go through it. And the carbonation is actually quite prominent in this one. It's got a good level of carbonation, which makes it quite drinkable and quite sessionable, as opposed to some of the the Rauch beers, which can obviously be very kind of creamy and things. But it's got a really nice kind of sweet and malty character to it. But it then kind of progresses to be nice and dry in the finish. And you've got just this lingering taste from the smoke but you can feel the sort of bready character, bready and yeasty flavours with the bit, little bit of woody element from the uh, in the middle of the tongue there so it's got a nice, it's got a really nice balance to it this one and it's a very interesting beer. I picked this one because it was a kind of traditional Norwegian style so it's definitely one that I would recommend if you see it that you pick up. Um, but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this beer review and I've not been rambling away too much so this was the Norwegian wood from the Hand Brigariet. Go and check out their website as I said, put it in the, I've put it in the description below. Go check out Slow Beer in the Richmond district in Melbourne. I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. As always please comment below and let me know your own thoughts on this one and please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Norwegians, please let me know about your beer as well and I will catch you soon with my next beer review. Cheers.